Let's go to Gary B. Smith and Catherine Rooney uh, Vera um, on the significance of this. And Catherine, I'm going to throw this out there, this rush to party right now, this rush to announce, uh, you know, new offerings in an environment where the taxes are still low. But we do know from President-elect Joe Biden that he wants to raise them, not, not you know, back to the old corporate levels, but from 21 percent to 28 percent and the rate on high, you know, net worth individuals like Gary B. Smith. So now I'm wondering <laughs> if that can explain this dash, no, no pun intended, to get on market and get public before all of this happens. What do you, what do you make of that? Oh, well, Neil, I think this is very similar to 1999 in the sense that it's irrational exuberance. This bull market, Neil, is spawning a rush for IPOs like we haven't seen since that time period. Um, so, look, I think there are some near-term risks if, if, the Democrats take both seats in Georgia, and you get a 50-50 split in the Senate with Kamala Harris be, being the tiebreak. Then, via the reconciliation process, Neil, uh, we could get that corporate tax hike um, from 28 to 20, from 21 to 28 percent. And just to, uh, as a matter of fact, Bank of America did this fantastic analysis where I thought was wonderful, which said that if in fact we do increase the corporate tax rate seven percentage point that would take off approximately 10 percent from S&P 500 earnings. So it's something to, to keep on the radar. I will end, though, Neil, with the fact that fiscal and monetary stimulus are what's taken us to current levels. It's been a phenomenal triumph of liquidity over right. fundamentals in this year. And I think that's something that's going to keep taking the markets higher going into the next year. You know, Gary, awaiting the other um, offerings to come and what will be a pretty bu busy blitz of buying opportunities, at least for those lucky enough to have these shares, um, you, you do wonder whether it's getting ahead of itself. And, and, and more specifically, I wonder what you make of the fact that DoorDash, as things stand now and as the Wall Street Journal has reported, is worth more than, than companies and, and concerns that have been around a while successful in their own right, like Domino's and Chipotle and Dunkin' Brands combined. Combined, yeah. is that realistic? I, I, I think it's. I, I think it's. I think the DoorDash deal is crazy. Look, they have a good business model. They have a large market share, but you'd have to question: Is this just a COVID slash pandemic stock? I mean, does it really? I mean, they 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 really had their their best quarter, if you will, basically. You know, after the whole pandemic thing kicked in, so you have to wonder: Is it kind of a one hit wonder if? We get the vaccine and successful. We get past the pandemic. Are people really still going to be using DoorDash a lot? I just, boy, I have to question. I certainly wouldn't buy it at, at these prices. I don't know what it closed at, 180-something. And, you know, as you say, 70 right. billion just sounds kind of nutty. Now, on the flip side, you know, Airbnb is going to have its IPO. That actually took a hit because of the pandemic. As you can imagine, people aren't doing a lot of traveling. They also have a pretty good business model. That's one I would seriously look at. And it's going to come in highly valued, right. of course. So I think you might want to wait, but that would be kind of the flip side of DoorDash for me. All right. We'll watch it very closely. Guys, I want to thank you.